things on on a new computer. I know, right? It's yeah, you gotta. It takes probably, I would say, a good month to get a computer all dialed in, just the way you want it. All your websites are logged in. All your settings are just the way you want them. You look perplexed. Wow. Settings? Well, yeah, see, in me, I could have gone and, you know, hit, like, the migration thing where it basically just, like, clones your, your computer and throws it on another Lots one. But I was like, I'd rather just start her clean. Yeah, there's something nice. Like, I always feel like when you do those migration things, you get all the old baggage from your old computer that you don't want. I do. What's up, bro? Input. Are we live? Yeah, we're live now. People are going to watch you troubleshoot your new computer live on air. Okay, I can now hear you through my headphones. Does, perfect, does this perfect. sound like I'm using the right mic? Uh, no, it doesn't. You don't sound now, as does this amazing. sound like I'm using the right mic? Well, now it sounds louder. So I think you're still oh. using the, the microphone from the computer. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. I can hear that on my end. What about... So you're hearing this? Yes. Okay. Okay. Play sound effects through... Uh, built in. I wonder if I have to change it on StreamYard. Yeah, it probably. Settings. Can you do that while we're live in the show? Oh, yeah, down at the bottom, settings and then audio, and you should be able to change yeah. it there. Oh, I might. I'm going to turn off their echo cancellation. That probably makes our audio sound like garbage. I tell you what, I'm gonna leave and then come back. Okay, sounds good. Oh, now you guys get to see the horrible split screen. Let me see, can I fix this real quick? Sorry, guys. Uh, Eric got a new computer, so he's just uh, doing all the fun troubleshooty stuff. How can I get rid of this? Just do that. There we go. Now it's just me. All right. So how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, I gotta move my camera so I can see the live chat. There we go. <laughs> he does kind of look like Eminem at 8 Mile, doesn't he? <laughs> is this better now? Uh, now give, does it seem like I'm really close to the microphone? Yes, it does. Give a little tap on the microphone just to be sure. And is this far away? Yes, yeah, very far away. Yeah, okay, perfect. Everything's now I'm doing an ASMR thing. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I got to get a drink. I'll be right back. Okay. That's right. Yeah, he, uh, he got his new MacBook, so now he's trying to figure it out, get all the settings all set up. Oh, I think he just stubbed his toe. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. So, what's everybody working on today? I was doing a bunch of stair treads today. Oh, oh, he's quicker than I thought. Let's see, let's see, what does he have? Is that a bubbly? Oh, he's naked. This is what the people pay for. Whew. You got uh, I'm got ready to, to podcast. We got to see a little bare chest action there, so you're gonna have to mark oh. this one as explicit. Uh oh, <laughs> I went in the kitchen to grab a a, a seltzer and I uh, dropped one on the ground. Oh no! Yeah, I almost had a. Little That's uh, a, uh, you got to put that one in the door fridge and leave it for a couple weeks. Oh, at least <laughs> that, that's one I get, I'll give to somebody if they come over tomorrow. Yeah, nice. I like Who it. Who am I joking? No one's coming over. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have friends, we just make YouTube videos for our yeah. online friends. That's why we that's why we make YouTube videos because we <laughs> yeah, have exactly. nobody else to talk to. <laughs> um, volume seem okay on this new thing? Yeah, sounds good to me. Okay. Pe this is riveting content that people showed up early for. Okay. Oh, Dadu said he changed his Patreon name. So you have to read the entire list of patrons now. Try and find his asinine joke one in there. Oh, fuck. That's, that's, <laughs> I gotta. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Can I find it? There are my notes. You know, you can't. So, uh, truthfully, 
I don't I don't go on Patreon and like look at the the list thing. I mm-hmm. have a list, and then when people add themselves to it, I get like a like a notification. But mm-hmm. if you change your name, I don't get a notification. Right. Yes. But I don't know. I don't know. I almost, almost feel like you should have to sign up with the funny name. I feel like <laughs> I feel like changing it mid, you know, mid patronage. Yeah, you don't get grandfathered in, is what you're saying, or yeah, no, that's yeah, not the right yeah. expression. I don't know. Okay, I got my notes. Okay, I got my streamyard. Got my so. Oh, I gotta move this slightly out of the way. I think I'm ready to do it. Okay. Is uh is Miranda out for the night? Because you got your door open. Yeah, so they started doing wine night on uh, oh. on Tuesdays. So the, okay. the girls get together and they bitch about their work because they work together, the her friend Taylor. And uh. Uh, so then I don't have to hear about it. Okay, okay. I like that. So it's that. a win win for everyone. <laughs> Everybody's happy. Uh I'm ready to rock. All right, here we go in three, two, one. Welcome to Off The Cut, a podcast where we talk about building, making, and answering all of your questions. I'm Eric from Spensley Design Co. And I'm Zach from Zach Builds. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on air, you can send it to offthecutpodcast at gmail.com. You can find both of us on YouTube, Instagram, and unfortunately, because we have to keep up with kids, you can find us on TikTok too. All right. Now let's get into the show. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Off the Cut episode 63. We're up in Toronto. Today is known as Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023. (laughs) I don't know why I did that. But here in Ohio, today is respectfully dedicated to the food of the day. And now this is a big one. Ready? Oh, yeah. Lettuce. Oh, food of the day. Is lettuce technically food? Because lettuce is one of those things where, like, if you're just eating iceberg lettuce, no, there's matter. no nutritional value there, is it? It's like 90% water. Maybe there's, like, a little tiny bit of fiber to it. Like, yeah, I mean, if I'm going to eat lettuce, listen, if I go to your home and you're like, hey, I, I made you a salad, I'm down for a salad. Mm-hmm. I'm not anti-vegetables by any okay. means. But if you give me an iceberg lettuce salad, like why bother? <laughs> so you're saying you need something with like some spinach and some kale in it? Or, or like some romaine lettuce, maybe yeah. some radishes, some Brussels yeah. sprouts, some of the need some real the vegetables spiky stuff. Yeah. Arugula. For me, like um like the iceberg lettuce is just like a texture thing. Like it goes in sandwiches to give it a little bit of crunch, but it's not really there for flavor or nutrition's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, iceberg lettuce, I'm all for on, like, a burger, like you said. Yes. Ooh, you know what I do really enjoy, though? Huh. A nice wedge salad. Oh. Where you get, like, an iceberg head of lettuce, and you cut it into, you quarter it, and then you just pack it full of, like, sour cream and ranch and bacon. and It's not really a salad at the end of the day. At, but... at that point, <laughs> that's just a vessel for accessories. Yeah, it's like an edible spoon almost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, have I've had wedge salad. Oh my god. I'm not even drinking yet. <laughs> wedge wedge salad. salads in the past wedge salads <laughs> in the past. But I definitely can't say it's anything that I've ordered in the last ten years. Mm. So Yeah, there's a there's one steakhouse that Sophie and I like to go to here in Toronto and they do a nice wedge salad. So we usually order one Outback? of those and split. <laughs> <laughs> yeah outback steak steakhouse this that's episode those, is brought to you by outback steakhouse that's one of those um needs. uh brands that's so powerful that even though we don't have outback steakhouses here in canada i still know the name i've never like i don't think i've ever seen well maybe i've seen one while traveling through the u.s but i've definitely never ate at one but i'm Good. still familiar with the brand so outback steakhouse chilies mm-hmm um applebee's tgi fridays Fridays is kind of in a different in a different realm okay i'm talking i'm talking more around the lines of restaurants that try to pride themselves as being good Mm. but they're really just pure unadulterated crap yeah 
there's this certain like yeah there's a certain breed of restaurant that's like they consider themselves to be like real restaurants but really they're just like they're a slight step up from fast food and you sit at a table and eat it like you don't and a waiter brings it to you you know what i mean like right it's not actually good food no. but they're they're they have like they're going through the whole rigmarole of like what a real restaurant would do but really yeah. you're just getting served a plate of fast food it's like it's like the bob evans of steak restaurants like okay okay like you you got, got you got bob evans in the, no uh, we don't have bob no. evans fuck yeah oh, there's sorry. explicit um what, <laughs> what, what's something it's like uh i don't know it's not as bad as like pizza pizza like yes. pizza pizza is not an outback steakhouse but i would say like we're talking maybe like a like a Domino's or something where they're like, Hey, we're going to charge you a little bit for this pizza, but you and I both know Domino's is not a good pizza. Yeah. But it's a step up from pizza pizza. Uh Oh, did we lose Eric? <gasps> I'm still here. Oh, okay. Your video froze for a second. I saw that. Yeah. Okay. It's good that you can see it. Yeah. I could still hear you the whole time. I don't know. Okay. When My your internet's vid- been crappy again today. When your video freezes, I'm always so afraid to keep going. I'm like, uh oh, should like, should I just proceed forward with the conversation and hope that he I can know. hear me, or should I just do dead stop and maybe we'll cut it out in the edit? Oh, well, you know, so I, I, I talked to I think yesterday, uh, J Cats called me mm-hmm. and he well, he wanted to talk about a bunch of stuff, but I I like got onto this the Zoom meeting that he wanted to chat on me with, and then he just started doing this thing where he just starts like, I, I guess I have to describe it in an audio format. He just starts mouthing words. And I'm like, dude, could you not hear me? And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> he had for like 30 seconds. Like, like That's he was like, like moving his hands and like mouth and stuff. Yeah, it, was, it was a good time, but <laughs> he got me good. He got me. Good. It's the new computer thing. Like uh, I got yeah. the new computer. I don't, I still log on here and like I hadn't done like this microphone yet with a new computer. So like I plug it in, it doesn't recognize it. Then I have to allow it under system settings and change. All- oh, God. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How, how are you liking the new computer though? Is it a, Oh, it's fantastic. Is it a million times better than the old one? Yeah. 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 So I got the four terabyte drive mm-hmm. on it so I can uh, edit all like multiple videos at the same time on my drive and not have to yes. push them off to the, external drive. the, the raid server thing. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely very, very speedy. Have you tried editing anything on it yet? I have. I just, just for comparison's sake, the last video that I put out the, the dining room table. Is that out? Yeah. yeah I put it oh, out. Oh, fucking YouTube. Did, oh, uh, wait, yes. we can swear. Cause you already swore once. So fucking YouTube didn't send me a notification. Well, I mean, it's just my video. I don't. I don't think anybody's gonna want to watch it. But. I've been waiting for this one for a long time, so I'm excited to watch it. Well, you better carve out your whole weekend to watch it. Is it 40 minutes? It's like 45 minutes long. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but I'll be like, Sophie, sit down, get dinner, because we're gonna watch a little piece of cinematic masterpiece over dinner. <laughs> She's gonna be 30 seconds in. Is like, what is this crap? People pay <laughs> this guy to do this. Uh, but so on my old computer the the macbook air Air. 2020 whatever the hell it is um it took about 15 to 18 minutes to export and render and for anybody who doesn't know what that means it's basically when we make videos it's uh, you see like kind of the kind of behind the scenes. I see a bunch of like random cuts and clips together with like boxes of things. It's like a very visual thing. But then for me to basically like save this into think of like a video file, like basically taking a word document and then saving it into a PDF. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're thinking, oh, yeah, you just press save, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> with video, it, it goes through rendering and exporting it and basically compressing this massive video file into um something really small that's like an mp4 file or yeah. mov file or whatever yeah. so on my old computer it took about 15 to 18 minutes on my new computer it took 
three and a half minutes. Wow. Is that 1080p or 4K? 4K. Oh, wow. That's really good. Right. Um, and so, like, to me, the export speed really isn't that critical. It's I'll tell you, I'll tell you where it is critical because I agree with you. Generally, it's like it's not that critical, but I've had something where I've been like, okay, I want to upload this like video at like, you know, noon today and it's 10 oh. and I'm rendering it for the first time. It's like, okay, that's going good. It's going good. You render it then you watch it and you're like, oh, damn, there's one little thing that I want to change. Yeah. Yeah. And all yep. of a sudden now it's a 20 minute round trip before you can get it rendered yeah. again. And uh, so that it can make a difference in certain weird edge cases where you're like right. trying to hit a deadline and you had to wait like 20 minutes for the video to finish rendering. Right. So. For, for me, the thing I'm most critical or concerned about, you're absolutely right that if you're in a tight timeline, having a faster computer is nice, but I'm more concerned about when I have, you know, 500 plus different clips for this yeah. video, your computer works hard yeah. to allow you to have all of those clips in a timeline and you're scrubbing back and forth with it, cutting out a couple of frames here, adding a text box here, doing this. Like it doesn't seem like a lot, but your computer is booking it trying to do yeah. all that. So I, you know, I think the way it works is when you're editing a project on your computer, like a video project on your computer, the video, the, the file, when you hit save, basically what you're doing is saving a list of a bunch of video clips and their location on your computer and which portion of that clip goes in the end video. So the project right. file that you're working from is essentially referencing 500 different clips on your computer. Mm -hmm. And it's saying like, I just want this specific part of this video file and right. i want to put it at this point in the timeline so if you have a 40 minute video that has 500 clips and you scrub ahead 20 minutes it's got to go find that clip find the specific time in that and then show it to you you know basically instantly it's a lot of work right right yeah it's and i think that's or that's where you can get into spending a lot of money to be able to access that stuff as fast as humanly possible. Yeah, yeah. But truly, truly, I did not hit any roadblocks with my old $800 MacBook Air when I was doing under 20 minute videos. Hmm, interesting. Zero issues. I find there are certain things that I can do. Generally, it's fine, but certain things like... Um, time-lapse footage or, you know, so say you have like yeah. a hour long video clip and you condense it down into like 30 seconds or something yeah. like that, because you're trying to do like the sped up footage look, um, that will always make my computer chug. Yeah. Because essentially what it's doing is it's taking this 20 gigabyte file and it's like compressing that down into 30 seconds. So you had to play through that entire footage to, figure out which frames to take to speed it up. Anyways, it's very computationally heavy. And then the other one I find that's also really hard is anything that you, have you ever reversed a clip? Oh yeah. For Especially some reason, if you reverse time-lapse. Oh, oh God. That's yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. No computer on earth can handle that. <laughs> right. So I use, I use final cut to edit. And part of final cuts thing is like when you're idle, so basically, like if I, you know, scroll my mouse or whatever, and then I let go of my mouse after a certain period of time, it'll actually start rendering all of the oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you grab your mouse, it'll instantly stop rendering. So it tries to do a lot of the computational stuff during idle moments, and mm -hmm. it just works efficiently. I know it's totally because you use Premiere, right? Yeah, I use Premiere for all my editing. I think. There was a thing with Premiere where basically if you play over a section of the video, it would render it and then save it. But I don't know if they disabled it or I right. just have that little box in the settings unchecked because it might stop doing that at a certain point. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, that's nerdy stuff. I guess uh, <laughs> somebody wants yeah. to know uh, what I got. So I got... Uh, I got the box there. Nice. I got the box. It is a MacBook Pro 14 inch 12 core CPU, 38 core GPU, 
32 gigabytes ram four terabytes uh hard drive u.s keyboard oh you didn't get the uh, french keyboard no i thought about it <laughs> i actually had to watch out for that when i buy laptops here there's two different layouts that you can get in canada and so if you're if you're not paying attention you can accidentally get the french layout and then there's like two or three keys that are switched around on it and it's horrible completely throws off all your muscle memory yeah yeah speaking of things that are horrible uh you ever heard of the green suitors podcast oh just the worst it's just the worst it, it came up on spotify the other day and i was like what is this trash is there a way that you can report like painful content on spotify yeah i don't know like on instagram <laughs> you can like report like yeah you're like uh, i find this post offensive yeah, yeah, yeah. I would report that podcast as being offensive because exactly, it's bad. Exactly. It's bad. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, what have you been working on? Anything exciting? Out? Yeah, so I think I talked about this before. Hold on, let me see if I can grab it here. I talked to you about uh, making my own mobile game console. So I've been oh, yeah. working on this for the past couple days. So basically, I've been iterating... I've been using my 3D printer to prototype this thing. My yeah. end goal is to make it out of wood, but I'm trying to like make this really complex shape. Oh, hold on. That's the extra battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been trying to make okay. this. I've just been basically printing one and then I like adjust the uh, measurement like a millimeter and then I print it again. I adjust the measurement by a millimeter. But the idea here is so I'm going to put the second battery in here like that to describe this for the 99 percent of people who aren't on the the live stream oh everybody's familiar with this project come on eric um so basically what i want to do is i've taken an old phone here i've torn into it so you can see the back side of it oh, here yeah. um and i'm going to modify it so that it's kind of the ultimate mobile gaming setup for playing like old retro games mm -hmm. um because a Cell phone like this one is actually a really cheap way to get a really nice screen, a really good processor, and, you know, all your various Wi-Fi connectivity and stuff like that. In um, a pretty tight package, too. In a pretty tight little package, right? Like, sorry, I'm trying not to touch the circuit board too much on the back of it, so I keep covering it up. Um, so, yeah, my idea is to make this custom sled that's going to hold it. I'm going to modify it so it has two batteries instead of just one. And then... Through this channel here, I'm actually going to add a big copper heat sink to the back side of it, a little something like this. Okay. And then this whole thing is going to clip into this thing, which is just like a little clip on game console or like game controller. Thing. Okay. Okay. So I'm making it out of plastic right now, but the end goal is to make it out of wood. And so it'll be like wood and copper, and hopefully it should look pretty cool when it's all done. I dig it. And. There's going to be the safety police that's going to say oh. that that thing is it's going to erupt into a fireball because oh, it's a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I have for that. I have some. Hold on, let me grab one thing real quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I have this please stuff. Stand by. Yeah, I have this stuff here, which is called a uh, cap Capcon tape. It's basically like um an insulating tape. It's kind of like electrical tape, but a little bit thinner. That you can put over things so i will try and you know have some precautions here but it's never enough for the safety police no 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 uh but yeah that, so do... is that the same tape as like people put like when they make uh electric guitars they put in the little cavities oh and, i don't know and the so I've never made it... like the wires and and i don't know a lot about guitars but it helps Let's with see. like the interference between like the the magnetic uh, pickups and, and uh, the wires. I'm speaking out of my ass here. I don't know. I've actually building an electric guitar is something that's kind of like on my bucket list to do eventually. Uh, but I don't know. I haven't researched that. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So that's uh, that's what I'm working on. I'm getting a lot of use out of my 3D printer, which has been great. What about you? What do you got on the bench? I've been working on this media console still. Okay. And. I want to air, air a grievance about that. Okay, let's do it. My and maybe this is just my lumber yard, but please tell me if it's it's the same in Toronto. Pre-surfaced, pre-milled lumber mm. is not flat. Yeah, I feel like it's flat 
they 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 mill it right, right. and then they put it on some storage rack and it's not stored in the optimal conditions and they just kind of let it sit until somebody buys it and in that time i feel like it goes all twisty and crazy right and i mean like it's not just like oh it's you know a, it's a 10 foot long stick it's got a little like bow or whatever i, I get that like no problem yeah. but i'm talking like it's like a it's like a like a caterpillar it's like super floppy and it's like <laughs> i paid twice the amount of money for this for this yeah, board because brutal. I can't mill nine, 10 foot boards in my shop. So I was like, cause I told you that story. I bought all the lumber and then got it home and went, damn it. I can't mill this. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to buy I've the never, pre-surfaced. I've never actually bought S four S lumber before. This is S two S. So I use my truck. Oh, to joint it. Oh, okay. Side. But even, yeah, even that, eh? So well, if it's S two S, couldn't you just run it through the? Yeah, you could joint one side with the track saw and then just right, run the other right, side through right. a planer. Okay, okay, right. So yeah. it's it's what I'll call good enough for YouTube. You're never gonna notice on YouTube that it ain't flat. Mm-hmm. But like, if I'm looking at the, it's a seven foot long media console. If I look down like the board, I'm like, oh baby, this is like a roller coaster. <laughs> did you did you do the stopped out? Um... Uh, dovetail yet so i was actually meaning to bring that up and that was on the list the list of things that i wanted to talk Potential about topics okay did we talk about in the that in the after show when uh jason was on i think it was the main show but i really have no basis for that statement i'm just kind of bullshitting okay so we had talked about it for i don't know 15 20 minutes or so mm-hmm. realized that it won't work because the panel that I want to put the dovetail joint, I don't know what the hell the pins or a tails on a dovetail is. The the part that sticks yeah. out. I don't yeah, okay. know, the fingery part. The the, the male part. It, right, the male part. Yeah. For me to cut that, I would have had to do it on my router table with the board straight up. Oh, and, and it's it like, was seven, like a feet. seven foot long boards. <laughs> I was like, wasted all that time. So Do I just they went make... with a sliding dado instead. I mean, that's probably just as strong in that application. Right. Right. Um, right. Would. Do they make like a little router bit that you could run over the end of the board? Like, say you took your router and rotated it sideways and then pushed it through, and then you could do it on both sides in order to cut it? I've got that with uh, the small, like, portable router thingy I've got. I think it, it may be on the DeWalt one. But the yeah. problem is, like, you put the router, instead of standing straight up, you put it, rotate it 90, and then you have, like, a little jig that kind of references the side. The problem mm-hmm. is the router, it's oh. just not stiff enough. So the router wants to use gravity, obviously, and if it's, a, yeah. you know, long, it wants to kind of fall. It doesn't work very well. And if your data or if your uh, dovetail is not perfect, it's not going to go into the slot, and it's just going to be a big right. pain in the butt. Yeah, right. So yeah, that's... you know it is what it is. But I'm slowly working on that project. I got the main case all done. Just started breaking down the panel that's going to be for the um, the drawer fronts. Nice. And then I started screwing around with the hardware. So what do you got for hardware? You have, just have sliders in there? So this is a very, very rough rudimentary mock-up of mm-hmm. there. I got to go. My camera's mirrored. Obviously, these boards don't fit in here whatsoever. But that, cor- that premise... quarter-inch gap is a design feature, right? It's a, like crumbs oh, and dust just slide down the That's almost a half-inch gap, dude. I can almost <laughs> oh, it's put on both sides, finger yeah. in there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's a floating media console, so it's going to be underneath the TV. And then it's going to have basically a fold-up uh door so it folds Ooh, up okay and then you can fold it back down like that okay so i know what you're thinking you're like okay well you just get regular hinges mm-hmm. that are gonna go on the top mm-hmm. but the problem is with gravity it, it won't stay up it's not like a typical cabinet door where don't the hinges they have, are on the sides don't they have they have certain hinges um it's they're ungodly expensive but mm. I've done it in kitchens where, you know, like your upper cabinet, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've it done like up. flip top ones on big, big doors, like two foot by 16 inch wide doors. Okay. Um, so Bloom does make specific hardware for that. Yes, I saw that. Um, one of the issues, and I believe they're called, and I have the the order sheet here. They are called Aventos is like is the is the main thing and then they have like the hk and a bunch of other other ones under the eventos eventos one the yes, problem and, is okay i want this to be inset so it's an inset drawer front that doesn't work for insets oh it's re- really it's only for like only for oh. overlay really yeah and they're what like 30 to 50 dollars a hinge Oh, dude, I think they're more than that. I think they're like 150 bucks a hinge. I We had to replace some for a client, and it was like, it was such a nightmare. But so what I ended up, while you're looking that up, what I ended up doing is I got this other thing from Bloom, which oh, yeah. uh, is basically like a, I think they're called lid stays. This mm-hmm. is the like cheapest, most entry level version of their Aventos, Aventos thing. And it works super well. But with the size of this, because this is such a super small cabinet, like no kitchen cabinet would be this small, right? Yes. Yeah. It barely fits in here. I mean, it's in there though, right? So... Yeah, it's in there, but it's it's tight. Like, look how close it gets to the top. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, I don't know, maybe half inch. And then when it gets to the, the door here, it's within like a 30 second of hitting the door at right. the very top. But right. it works. Yeah. Whew. I mean, that's yeah, sweet. Um, I was going to say one little I you, you maybe already thought about this, but seeing mm-hmm. as it's a media console and I'm guessing it's going to be what, like 20 inches off the floor, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Is it might you not want to have those doors fold downwards so that it's easier to access the stuff in those drawers? Because if it flips up, it's like kind of in your way. I thought about that and I don't. I truly don't know. Yeah. Um, It's one of those things where you almost have to kind of build it and then test it out and be like, oh yeah, okay, it's fine. It's not that big a deal. Or So like if I just take this and very rudimentary flip it down, Mm -hmm. it because of gravity with this slide, it wants to just slam itself down. So you open it and it just goes boom, slam it way down. Which is not flip it then it does its soft close thing, right? Or it slowly I see, goes down. I see. Yeah, so, which is nice. I like that. And on the Bloom instruction thing, it explicitly says that, that those Aventos hinges are designed for fold up only and not fold down. Yeah. I could not find anyone that made fold down hinges like that. Yeah. And I that's looked. Tough. That's tough. Yeah. Um, and you have the 110 degree hinges on there, right? So it's going to raise up a little bit to give you like more access. It's probably fine. Right. I think it's it'll fine. work. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Well, to be honest with you, how often am I, am I actually going to ever open that? Yeah. Probably very yeah. rarely, if I had to guess. Right. Which is why yeah. I'm completely getting rid of the media console in my house soon. We talked about this and I was going to, I'm going to take all this stuff and just toss it in. uh, I'm going to make a new coffee table with a little flip top on it Mm -hmm. and put all my stuff in there. Are you worried about ventilation at all? Yeah, of course. I'm going to put some fans in it. It's going to be like a super high tech coffee table. Are you going to put LED lights in there? I don't know. Well, I probably will. Just so when you open it up, you can actually see all the stuff in there, but it won't be like accent light well i don't know maybe we'll think of, let me let me think about it i haven't designed it yet make it look like uh what what did you say in your one video unicorn poop yeah <laughs> unicorn, <was>? vomit. <laughs> <laughs> unicorn vomit <laughs> uh, how's that new, com- uh the new computer setup working for you great man it's been uh it's been way more trouble free than i ever expected it to be i kind of thought it'd be a pain in the ass to get it going but once i spent the like two days setting it up it was it's been fine ever since and it's been dead silent and great so i'm really happy with it that's fantastic yeah your Uh, comment by the way is starting to finally get some people riled up (laughs) is it i don't know if you've checked lately but there's a lot of people angry at you (laughs) 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> so for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, Zach put out a video where he basically like souped up his his uh, PC and did a bunch of stuff. So I left a comment. Uh, a friendly troll i said what did i say like or you could just buy a mac yeah or I something think so. like that yeah knowing that it would piss people off and seems like it has oh you you struck the nail on that what's the expression <laughs> you hit the nail on the head uh, yeah i love going on other people's videos and like seeing what other like other friends have left like troll comments i know yeah something that scott walsh uh suman and uh john cesaro do is they like basically challenge each other to like out troll one another on their videos <laughs> and stuff like that and it's always funny to search out those <laughs> comments i right, ought uh, to keep an eye out for those next time i actually had somebody so this was the dining room table the infamous dining room table mm -hmm. is out I'm very um, excited to watch this, but I, like you were saying in the pre-show, I need to set aside a good chunk of time before I do it. 45, 45 minutes. minutes. Yeah. I think somebody in the live chat said it was actually 42 and a half or something like that. Eh, close um, enough. Still like but... the length of a good hour long TV show, essentially. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's doing all right. It's got like 21, some thousand, 20, some thousand views in the first day, which Oh, I know I should, take a, first I should take a step back and be like, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, but it's doing, it's doing okay. Uh, How, what's no the one average the view duration on it? I don't know. Where the hell is my phone? Here we go. It must be some ridiculous phone. number, right? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm at 21,000 views. Average view duration is 19 minutes and 12 seconds. <laughs> that's ridiculous. So... But I mean, that's below 50%. Yeah, I guess. But with a long video like that, like, I don't know. You kind of have to expect it to a certain degree. I would it's... love to know how many ads YouTube, like auto ads YouTube put in that Yeah, thing. yeah. There's a way to check. I found it once, but it's it's buried pretty deep in the analytics or something. I just, I just don't care. Like, if the ads piss you off that much, get YouTube premium. Yeah, stop being cheap, get YouTube premium. right. right. So oh. hopefully that that helps revigorate, invigorate, revigorate, reinvigorate, reinvigorate. Yeah, reinvigorate my channel because I haven't put out a video in two months. Was so, it really two months? Yeah, I oh, guess yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Was the last one before that the one you did for JCats, the charity build? I think so. Yeah. Or the pricing guide. Uh, I think it was the one for JCats. The JCats one. Okay. So that would have been what like the. the couple was that before we went to workbench no 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 it was i launched it like the day we got back from workbench con i think no well okay so the jcats one you definitely showed me your thumbnail and everything at workbench i'm pretty sure so i'm pretty maybe sure i launched it like the day we got there i think maybe the day we got there yeah huh oh i miss workbench I wish it could be like every like three or four months or something. Do like once a quarter and just meet up with all your friends. I know. Oh, wow. Your, know. your screen uh, froze in a very unflattering way. <laughs> hey, at least my shirt was on this time. That's true. That's true. Um, Speaking of, of people with their shirts on, though, oh, we've got two new patrons. patrons. Let's do it. Yeah, uh, we've got rigid fans. Okay. Okay. Irony there. We are actually following Rigid on our Off the Cut podcast. Perfect. Uh, are we also following Odie's Oil yet? You bet we are. Okay. Thank God. Thank yeah. God. God. I've seen, like, if I log in there and uh, uh, Derek Jennings, one of our, our patrons, has been kind enough to uh, cut up some videos to help promote yes. the podcast. So yeah, Derek's doing a those. great job with those. Yeah. Ser seriously, though, Derek, we, we genuinely appreciate it. I know we told Very you over so. email, but we really do because. We just don't have the time to do it. So yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I I feel like I can barely find the time to post the damn videos, let alone edit them. Oh, dude, I know. I time is just being. I was talking to you about this last week off there. I've just been so busy lately. Yeah, I haven't had the chance to do any of the stuff I've wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I finally got my taxes done and all that. So, woohoo! Have a little bit of free time again. Hopefully, hopefully. 
But yeah, I'm sorry. We gotta let's not distract. We gotta talk about the patrons. We gotta yeah, give yeah, them a yeah. shout out. Um, rigid fans, and no one likes rigid. Uh, <laughs> we follow Odie's oil. So what I was saying is that now that like I post stuff on our Off the Cut podcast Instagram thing, mm-hmm. um, the dude who runs Odie's oil keeps popping up on my feed, and I'm like. This guy is still oh, on I it. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Is he? Do you think the owner runs their Instagram page? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because like you'll see comments of just like snarky comments that like Odious Oil is replying back to people. It's like, <laughs> dude, stop. That's so funny because yeah, there's no way if it was like an intern or something like that that was running their social media, there's no way that they would be snarky to like comments yeah that's funny we should approach them about sponsoring the podcast like just oh, do like a so funny. full-on serious pitch and see what they say that would be too funny <laughs> i just don't want to talk to that guy that guy is a piece uh, of work yeah it's just a complete energy drain talking right. to him it's like it's like going to applebee's talking to that guy but yeah um, uh hold on back up a sec though did you read the names of the new patrons I... no okay so okay. santiago osorio is back he's back after I've... a long stint in azkaban prison <laughs> and don patterson not to be confused with this with the famous author do you know an author that has the last name patterson or first name don no. Uh not to be conf- not to be confused with famous author James Patterson. Mm. Um Don's actually his brother. Is Don texting me right now? <laughs> oh, someone else is. Um He's texting you and saying quit messing up my name. Yeah. That was a bad patron read. But we've got <laughs> our of course we've got our returning top tier patrons. We've got our cockers that's a uh, dadu who tried yeah. to slide in and change his name to something funny? Mm-mm. Not having it. Not Mm-mm. having it. If you wanna, if you wanna put a funny name, you gotta sign up with a funny name. Um, so we got Dadu, we got Luke Schmidt, Derek Jennings at Bacantry Designs again. Derek, thanks for editing those videos, man. Yeah, thank um, you. Corey Duvall, Jason Price of Priceless Pro Design, Scott Eastman. At Eastie's Woodshop, and of course, the Power Cocker, formerly known as Wes. I'm going to take a sip of seltzer and tell the people why we want them to sign up for Patreon. Well, the nice thing about signing up for our Patreon is not only do you get access to the after show where we get completely unhinged and just talk about the craziest stuff. Um, you also get access to the Discord. And if you, which is a nice little community onto itself. It's not even really about the podcast at this point. It's just people sharing their projects. We got sections for people sharing the woodworking projects. We got sections for people who are content creators and they're sharing tips back and forth. And of course we have the dork dungeon where I like to hang out and we trade PC tips and stuff like that. Uh, What else do you get as a patron? You get our undying gratitude, which is always nice. You get your name read on the show. Get merchandise. You get merchandise. That's true finally got their head out of their ass and got their things situated and yeah are people starting to receive stuff yet i haven't seen yes, much in the are. discord server about it okay good 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 yes they are i've already gotten alerted by a couple people and i've cool. gotten the emails from patreon that said that like their stickers and t-shirts and all that jazz has been sent out so Perfect. we're good there good good it's about yeah. damn time and uh also, the greatest joy in the world of knowing that you support our podcast and help uh, help us keep this thing going. Right. And when you support us, that means you're not supporting inferior podcasts like the Green Suiters podcast. It's so true. That's, That's so important. true. Every dollar you give to us is a dollar that doesn't go to them. Right. So double your <laughs> pledge so they don't get anything. Uh, speaking mm. of things that have gone... well. Let me try a different segue. Speaking of complete morons oh. um, on the Grease Suiters podcast, we're also, I was a moron yesterday and today. Oh, do tell. So I, I feel like we need a, a jingle. Like, oh, okay. Hold on here. I got you. I got you. Uh, oh. 
Well, I like don't know a, if any of these are gonna be like good, but things I messed up or something. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know. This, oh. I thought there were more sound effects in this program, but there's really not. Let's I see. feel like I'm in like a '80s club. Things Eric messed up. Thank you. <laughs> that was I. I want this intro all the time. So <laughs> working on this media console, right? Mm -hmm. And like I'm pretty far along on it, so it's not just like it's like my first cut and I'm hitting this problem. I've I made a couple cuts and like every time I'm pushing pushing my wood, it <laughs> I see <you> smile. <laughs> it seems kind of hard to push through the blade, and I'm like, okay, okay maybe my my fence got misaligned or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, I got it all aligned. And then so I started going down this rabbit hole of like micro and I mean micro adjusting my riving knife. I'm like, it's like my riving knife is getting caught. I have had that happen. Yeah. OK, so no joke. I spent six hours yesterday and about three hours this morning doing it, like trying to get it all situated, situated. So I was like me being a math guy. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get my calipers out, put the calipers on the, on the riving knife. And it's like two and a half millimeters. I was like, mm -hmm. okay. Then I put the calipers on the blade and it's like 2.3. Mm -hmm. And then I instantly after like eight plus hours, just screwing with all this stuff to like unbelievably minuscule details. I go. I have the full curve wrapping knife in and not the thin curve wrapping knife. Oh. Oh, dude. Yeah. So damn <laughs> frustrated. And now it uh, works like a dream. Yep. Like, I had uh I think my riving knife got bent at some point. So it was oh the correct God. thickness, but it was just like out of alignment on the the blade, just ever so slightly. And it was creating a lot of friction. And yeah, again, it was just like hard to push stuff through. Right. So for a while, I was like, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm just going to take the riving knife off until I have like an afternoon to figure this out. Ugh, the amount of comments I got about where's your riving knife? Where's your riving knife? It's like, oh my God, people think the world will burn down if you don't have a riving knife on your table saw. But in all fairness, it is a pretty good practice to have. Oh, of I course, mean, like, yeah. I mean, better to have it, it than there. not. But I did also run it for like, you know, a month or something like that with no riving knife. And it was it was okay. What did your dad say? I don't know. I don't think he cared either. And the thing is, you know, like this, this lack of concern I have for my own well-being, that comes from somewhere and it's him. <laughs> Fair. Now, yeah. here's a question. You and your dad wouldn't mind using the table saw, but if if you're like, hey Sophie, will you make this cut? Would you? Oh God, I'd be like, no, yeah. no, no way, no way. You ain't, or, you, she ain't using it without a riving knife. Yeah, exactly, and and uh, like employees and stuff like that too. Like I'm constantly like on the job site, like going around, like putting safety glasses on my workers while they're working, putting ear protection on them and stuff like that. But then when I go to use the saw, it's like no safety glasses, no ear protection. Do <laughs> so you put your safety squints on? You go up and you squint yeah, exactly. your eyes real good? Yeah. Or? I'm like, I figure if I can just like cut down on the amount of surface area by like half, then it's like there's half of the amount of half of the chance that I'll get something in the eye. You know what I mean? Scott, Scott just chimed in and said that he hasn't he hasn't had a riving knife for years and commenters just accept it now. <laughs> I like it, Scott. I like it. Oh, that's the that's attitude you funny. have to have. It's I mean, it's a, it's all engagement at the end of the day. So I wanted to ask you. This isn't. This is uh, your specialty, and it's not mm -hmm. tech. Okay. So I'm already my, asleep. I know. I know. <laughs> so I told you my buddy bought that one house, and he's doing a bunch of like renovations, and I'm helping mm -hmm. him do stuff. Mm -hmm. So we were whip, ripping out a bunch of like drywall and like. It's a super old house, like blown in, loose, like fluffy pillow insulation, right? Yeah. So he was too cheap to rent an insulation vacuum. Okay. So I know that that's, you know, one option is you get like a 15 horsepower motor and you just yeah, suck just it all out, right? Yeah. 
It's like a okay. reverse fire hose, essentially. Right. And it was like two hundred dollars to rent it for the day. I was like, dude, you're a moron for not renting this. <laughs> um but anyway, so we had to rip all the drywall out. Yeah. And then so he has a shop vac and it's what, like the two inch hose or whatever. That thing clogs in, in no time, right? Yeah, all the time. So genuine serious question. I don't know the answer to this. Mm-hmm. Is there like some supersized vacuum that allows you to clean up job sites quickly and efficiently? Or do you just have to get a broom and dustpan? Broom and dustpan. I mean, I'm sure there is some like thick, thick boy hose out there. But okay. at the end of the day, the the diet, the once the diameter of the hose increases to a certain point, like you're going to need some serious horsepower on the other side in order to suck that much volume of air. Right. Yeah. So it, I think you become constrained by just trying to move enough volume of air. Like if, to have like a three inch hose, I bet you would need some, it's probably like an exponential curve, right? Like you need, yeah. you'd need a lot more power in order to get decent suction out of a three inch hose. So yeah, it's, it's just, you know, honestly, the shop vac doesn't even come out until the job site's already looking pretty clean. It's just okay. toss it in a toss it in a bin with a dust uh, broom and a dustpan. So is that like the lowest guy on the totem pole job yeah. has to yeah. go go yeah, around cleaning, and like clean up, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> he has to go up with the on his knees and like scoop up like it's the pieces of the drywall that are like you know half the size of your phone that you're like. As soon as I go to suck that, yes, like your 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 shot back is clogged, and you're like, now, I, oh, yeah. Even today, I was, I was like cleaning up the job site, and uh, I was cutting hardwood all day. So there's like all these little hardwood pieces on the floor. Right. Even those clog it up, like just like little slivers. Like if there's enough volume of them, they'll clog it up and it won't work. So, well, that yeah. definitely makes me feel better because like I was cleaning the stuff up, and I'm like, I've got to be doing this wrong. There's yeah. no way this is no, right. No, that is the way to do it. And the really shitty thing about it is as soon as you start sweeping, all that dust is up in the air and all of a sudden it's like it's hard to see it so dusty in there, which is, you know, obviously horrible for your lungs if you're not wearing a mask or something. Oh, yeah, dude. I had my respirator on the whole time. We were doing yeah. drywall, old yes. insulation that was like kind of like moldy and gross. I was like, yeah, you okay. better believe I'm wearing this thing the whole yeah. time. I had I've the actually... windows open with fans and everything. I've actually trans- just transitioned away from wearing the N95s to just okay. wearing the like full on 3M. That's what I was wearing too. Yeah, yeah. The respirator, I find it more comfortable to wear for a long period of time. And it's obviously just doing a much better job of filtering stuff out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I wear that like if I'm going to do be doing something where like, Okay, I I know I'm gonna be in a mess for a long period of time, but if I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make a quick cut, that's when I go to like like an RZ or something like that. Yeah, I yeah. know the RZ masks don't do a great job, but it's better than nothing, and yes. it's just like it's quick. And at the end yeah. of the day, it's like it's PPE that I will use. So therefore, for me, it's better than nothing. So yeah. I'm okay with it. The best PPE is the PPE that you'll actually use. Right. 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 Because people do this like, oh, you, you know, if I remember once somebody commented on one of my Instagram posts, he was like, I won't even walk through my workshop without a full respirator on, even if I haven't used a tool all day long. It was okay. like, you need to be promoting that level of safety. And I was like, no. <laughs> okay. Like, if, fine, if you want to do it, but I'm not, I'm never going to be that person. You should tell that person that the only instagram videos they ever post are just saying you need to wear a mask you need to wear a mask you need to wear a mask yeah let me know how that goes for you yeah (laughs) (laughs) i mean yeah the the the, some guy with you know 90 followers who's like trying to be a content creator so Uh, i get Uh. the weirdest like messages from people like i got a message from somebody the other day and they were like, I like the why don't questions. Like, mm. why don't you use this? Mm-hmm. Why don't have it? Yeah. That's the simple answer. But that's not the answer people want to hear. Yeah. Well, I, my friend has a great response when somebody says, you know, like, where are your safety glasses? They'll say, oh, they're at the store. 
<laughs> so at your mom's you house? <laughs> yeah, I left them at your mom's house. <laughs> oh, that's always a classic one. <laughs> that's classic. Yeah, I no, I always try to put my, gla- my glasses on and like I always have hearing protection in because one, it's annoying mm-hmm. to listen to that stuff buzz, but two, like I, I'm listening to books or yeah, or exactly. Podcasts or music or whatever. Yeah. Not to Green Suitors podcast. God Definitely forbid. Not that. Um, but yeah, I just I don't know. Those those are always in. Yeah, I don't. I don't think know. I do you know anything the... wildly unsafe. Yeah, the other thing too is like I don't smoke. I don't do like I don't drink that much. Um, Unless it's the after show. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't do any of these things that are like big health risks. So it's like so I take a little dust in every once in a while. I don't know. It's, you know, like I'm not, I, I'm living a much healthier lifestyle than the average person was even, you know, 20, 30 years ago. So it's like, I don't know. You got to pick your, pick your battles. Right. I mean, can you imagine how busy you would be if you did everything that was like doctor recommended? Like, oh, God. Yeah. Get up for five minutes every hour, brush your teeth. So, so, and so I mean, we brush oh. our teeth. We're not animals. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, but the the recommend. See, it's one of these things. It's like you should brush your teeth every day. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm all right with that. And they're like, you should brush your teeth once when you wake up, and then once before you go to sleep. It's like, yeah, okay, all right. And this, you should brush your teeth uh, ten minutes after every af- ten minutes after every meal. And you're like, nah, I'm not doing that. Fuck that. <laughs> or like, or like after like a coffee or whatever. They're yeah, like, anything it's, it's, with yeah. Like every meal or drink, you should brush your teeth after. It's like, okay, you lost me. I'm never gonna do that. Right. Yeah. These doctor recommended things. Like I think these doctors are getting paid off by the the. It's big dental, man. It's big big dental. dental's paying all them all dental. off. It's big brush. Big brush. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's a good conspiracy <laughs> yeah i actually had nobody on our last episode the one about the reptilians no one like sent in like a message of like whoosh, whoosh. no the reptilians are real man They're out well there. you know i think people who believe that the governments of the world are run by reptiles probably know that it doesn't go over that well in most conversations so they probably like play it a little close to the vest yeah, yeah. They're probably not listening to Off the Gut Podcast. No, they're probably listening to some, you know, Reptile Hunter podcast. All right. I think <laughs> that's what they talk about on Green Suiters, but I'm not 100% sure. That sounds right. That sounds right. You know, we need to get the other guys. We need to get Ronnie and Sedge from Green Suiters on here and then see if they know that we're talking trash about their podcast <laughs> all the time. <laughs> well, Jason knows, so hopefully know. I'm about. sure he's relaying it. Well, he yeah. texted us last night. We we had sent some like snarky comment to him, and he was like, I literally <laughs> just read this this message chain on our podcast. <laughs> so it is what it is. It's a mm-hmm. it's friendly rivalry. And that's just right. remember that you when you support us, you don't support them. And that's exactly. what we're here for. Exactly. But uh I do actually want to say something nice about Jason. Mm. His suggestion of that that camera rig thingy yeah. on like the concrete bucket yep. game changer. Okay, you did it. I did it. So you do you like got a bucket, you filled it up with concrete and you stuck a pole in it? Yeah. It's uh what is it called? It's like a it's not schedule 40, whatever like the black iron pipe stuff is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I jammed that in the concrete bucket and then I made one of those little articulating arm thingies mm-hmm. um it's fantastic because if i got a bunch of like the base itself is only like 12 to 16 inches wide so i can go all around my shop and i have to like bring the the tripod legs in yeah. or anything like that yeah it's so fast i love it i think only I need to do thing like that. is that if i press the record button it has the teeniest amount of like give and shake to it so i have to let it sit for like two seconds so i can't just go like record okay so i'm working on this like oh i see i gotta give it a second for a little bit yeah but it's very minimal okay Um, your camera has ibis it might take that kind of wiggle out of it right it does but like if you were the person who's like watching like those four pixels on the side you might be like oh it's slightly shifting but if you're looking at me you would never notice yeah like oh my god it's literally unwatchable because the four pixels on the side are just shifting ever so slightly right but it works well 
Nice. Have I you like that. made any progress towards your camera or your ceiling mounted camera rig that you're talking no, about? No, I haven't. That's uh so I'm working on a house right now that hopefully yes. I should finish in a couple weeks. And then that gives me time to kind of go into content full time again. Ooh. So hopefully I'll be able to I have this like huge list of projects that I want to do. Um, and that's one of them, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Is that worth the effort or should I just do something like what you've done? I don't know. Uh, the concrete thing's pretty nice, man. Yeah. Like that's the thing. Like I, it would be a lot faster. It'd be a lot cheaper. And I think it might function a little bit better. Right. Yeah. And the thing is like, even if you hate it, Okay. You bought a five dollar bucket, five dollars exactly. of concrete, ten dollars yeah. in a pole, and then like the little, the wood parts for the rig. You can be like, "Yeah, I don't like it. I'm out fifty bucks." Like, yeah, okay. So, did you? How did you make the? Did you buy the little rig that goes on the pole? I bought the plans for it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I know. I'm sure somebody in the in the live stream knows what it's called. I, I apologize. The, the Moby jig. Yeah, I think that yeah. was what it was. Um, but his had like three different segments, so it could go out to like, I don't know, like 24 inches long. Mm -hmm. Mine only goes, I made it about 12 inches long. So I got rid of some of the other segments because I didn't need all of that different extension. Like I could roll it around everywhere and just having it like that, having it only like six, eight inches long. Yeah. Gave me tons of flexibility okay. and it, it cut down a little bit of like the wobble. Well. And so how did you cut it? So you bought the plans, but they're just CNC files. Are they not? Well, yeah, this is what I, I might, I, maybe I didn't bring it up. Cause I, I know... was an idiot and I saw that. Um... Who is it? Oh, Alma? On her... Alma. I was, I know it's, it's like pink soul studios. I'm like, what's her name? Again? Yeah. Alma. Um, she actually, We'll just make like she has a CNC and we'll yeah. do it for you. Yeah, you mentioned that on the lot, but you said you didn't or did you use no. her, sir? I, I was going to. Okay. But then I cut them all out by hand like a moron and spent so, like eight hours doing it. So what did you do? Did you print out sheets of paper? Trace, right. And then, okay. Complete waste of time. <laughs> Complete waste of time. But you have a CNC. I think if you buy those Wobie jig yeah. pens. Yeah. I think it comes with with the CNC file. So, like, dude, just pay them twenty bucks or whatever it is, and make it yourself. Yeah, but I might also just get Alma's version because I don't want to, like, you know what I mean? Like, you still have to sit there and babysit the CNC. So, right, yeah. right. I think what how we'll Alma see. does it, just to give him credit, is I think she's like, oh, like, send me like your order number from gotcha. the plan. So, like, I, I know that you bought his plans. Then I'll like make them for you. Yeah, I, yeah, I think gotcha. that's how she does it. Gotcha. But I, I probably check should it out. just cut them myself. Yeah, yeah. It's uh I I was talking to Scott about the um like that big cam I sent you the link for the video, right? Or I told you I with the know. the guy 3D printed his own Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was thinking like, should I try and do something like that? Just like make my own simplified version of it? Because his is quite complex and counterbalanced. I was like, I could right. do like a more rudimentary version of that and 3D print it might be kind of fun too, but at the end of the day, so many hours in the day, so I might I just know. I might just do the Wobie jig thing. And, and and I mean, hell, just if you're even getting really lazy, like you said, just have Alma make them for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The does one thing that versions? does add up is the hardware, like all the nuts and bolts and stuff like that. Dude, I remember a time when it felt like hardware was free. But now yeah. hardware is expensive, especially if you're buying like individual pieces. You're like, oh, yeah, I'll just grab 24 washers. It's like, oh, they're a dollar each. Just for right. Like a little circle of steel. You're like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> See, what I do is if I go get hardware, especially for like your classic like three eighths inch washers, mm -hmm. that is part number AAA at Home Depot. I just go grab the bulk th thing where it's like a hundred mm -hmm. or two hundred of them because I'm like I know I'm going to use these. Yeah, spend because twenty five dollars on a box of washers and just move on with your life. Yes, and then you like you stash it in your workbench and you know you always have washers for the rest of your life. Right. 
you need to get one of those little parts bins where the one, you open the lid up and yes. it has all the little. Yeah, like I've never successfully expensive. got one of those organized. I feel like you'd have to spend a whole day just putting all your screws in the right little bucket and stuff like that. See, that's really satisfying to me. Yeah, it's it's satisfying to me too. Like I love organization, but I also, as a time constrained individual, it's like mm, there's better use of my time than organizing screws. That's fair. Totally, totally fair. Um, did we announce that we wanted people to make a new we, intro for our podcast? I think we did in the after show last week, but we didn't do it okay. in the main show. So I could be wrong about that. The so our, our our buddy Mark from Remarkable Works, he used to be on a podcast called For the Gram Podcast. It's a fun mm-hmm. podcast. They goof around, yeah. talk about some content creation stuff. Well, uh, Vic and Vic from Stump Shop and Dom from M Inspire Living are still on the podcast now. I listen to the podcast, good podcast, much better than the Green Suitors podcast. <laughs> um, you can check out uh, what is it? Why did I just blank? Uh, for the Grand Podcast on all of your streaming services, highly recommend it. They don't have a Patreon, but if they did, I'd recommend that you give them your money instead of the Green Suitors. But, <laughs> um, Anyway, they were like, yeah, we're we're tired of our intro. We want somebody to make one. So I made one for them. And then I was like, well, this is kind of fun. Mm-hmm. We, sh- we should invite people to make an intro for our podcast. I didn't know that you made one for them. Yeah. It's on their oh, most recent episode. Really? It's not great. But it's better <laughs> than what they had before. Okay. All right. So you, we, we, you mean to tell me you spent the energy to make Vic and Dom an intro, but you didn't do one for our own podcast. You're absolutely right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Just checking. I wanted to make sure I had my facts straight. Yeah. Your facts are very much straight. (laughs) Oh, oh my God. But yeah. So anybody listening genuinely, yeah. even if you've never recorded an audio thing in your life, give it a shot. If yeah. it's uh, if it's not racially or sexually charged, actually, if it's sexually charged, might be okay. Eh, it could be okay. Uh, <laughs> no, if as long as it's not politically or racially charged, mm-hmm. we're in for it. We'll play okay. it. We'll play it at least one episode. Yeah, yeah. It might not stick around if it's a horrible intro, but you know, that's what it is. So open I invite. Had, I had this uh, vision for my YouTube videos that I would have this intro that I would slowly modify over time. I was like, Oh, I'll mm-hmm. like, you know, like every I'll, I'll just like take little clips from videos and kind of plug it into this intro. Cause I had like a whole like um, template set up for it. So yeah, I could yeah, yeah. essentially just drag and drop. Never once did it. I was like, the, no. the intro will be this thing that evolves over time. Never once did it. And now I don't even have the intro on my channel anymore. <laughs> no one, no one wants your damn intro. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, I mean, how many times do you go watch a video when you're like, hey, my name's so and so. Don't forget before I get into the video, like and subscribe and do this. It's like, for God's sakes, just shut up and get yes. on with it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're new to the channel. If you're invested in it, like, say you've been watching this person for like, you know, years and years, you're like, okay, it's like his, his, his interest spiel. But if you just search something like how to fix my washing machine and you stumble into one of their videos, you don't right. want to sit through all of this like excess information to get to the part that you actually want to see. Right. Yeah. Right. This is why we've been telling people just start your damn video, just start yeah, just talking, get into it. just start building. Just start yeah. cutting. Yeah. Like you can talk about what you're doing. Oh, I'm going to be building a media console or dining room table today, but start cutting stuff. Yeah. Cause you're losing everybody if you don't. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. try and uh, it's funny. I'll like write out intros and then I'll go film it and then I'll come back. And like, so I'll write it once then I'll sp- be like, okay, I could remove this, I could remove this, I could remove this. I'll go film it, and while I'm filming, I'm like, this part's boring. Like, I'm just gonna not say this a little bit. And then 
I'll do it again once I'm in the edit and I'm going through it. I'll be like, oh, I could cut the sentence out and it would be fine. It's like I'm always like trying to refine down to like the shortest, tightest thing possible. Right. Because the end of the day, people's time people is People have no attention pan, uh, no attention pan, attention span. <laughs> They just want you to yeah. show what you're doing and they don't they don't care about you. They just want to move on with their life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Says the guy they who just released see the, the most expensive long thing video. I've ever met. I know. I know. <laughs> but the, the, the retention's doing pretty well. I mean, yeah. like. Yeah. I don't know. But even in that video, like, I just start building. Like, the yeah. first thing is me just ripping wood off of my bench and start cutting it. Like, I like that. I'll try that sometime. I've been kind of, I usually do like I like to do a little setup because I find it fun too. Um but I should try a video where I'm just like right into building. It feels awkward. Yeah. It but I mean feels... it's I... No, you go. You How go did ahead. you start it? Do you do like a voiceover? I don't when know. When you go like okay, you don't even so. remember because you probably edited that thing six months ago. I can. Do you want me to look up the the date that I made the project? Project. Yeah, please do. I think that'll be fun for people. Lightroom. No, not Lightroom. Dining table. Okay, so I'm gonna look up the date that I took the very first clip. Okay. So today, for reference, people, is Tuesday, May second, twenty twenty three. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Okay, it was. 5 24 2022. Oh, so, so like almost a, a year, year ago. ago. Basically, <laughs> I would call that a year. I would just round up and call that a year. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, conservatively 340 days ago. Right. Right. I swear. Really? I feel like in the summertime you were working. Did you like sit on that project for a little bit or something? I don't know. I feel like you were talking about it a lot in the summertime. Okay. So this this is what's fun about saving all your footage. Yeah. Okay. So in... I can... Come on. Make this bigger. That's what she said. (laughs) Ooh, Wes said that he's got an idea for an intro. Late May, I'm like cutting, rough cutting the lumber down. Okay. Um... (laughs) Late May, I'm still rough cutting the lumber down. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Early Uh, June, I have the table glued up and I'm cutting it to rough size. Okay. So that's uh, a a couple weeks. Yeah, that's summertime-ish. Okay, that's kind of coming together. June 11th, I have the base starting to get glued up. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're getting there. Uh okay. Oh, here's me finishing it, putting finish on it. Finish went on the tabletop June 16th. So yeah, I would have finished it. It looks like June 17th was the last time that I filmed filmed. Okay. Okay. So it took me a month, month and a half to make it. Yeah. Yeah. And then eight months to release the YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I could never operate like that. I I'm, I'm so you know, like I'm excited to get the videos out. Like I you know like I'm always like I want to get it out as soon as possible cuz I'm like excited to share yeah. with people. I don't think I could legitimately sit on something for 8 months. But honestly, it's it's it was partially intentional, partially not intentional. Like I did yeah. Late last year was when I did like I did six or eight videos for Craig. So they'd be like, hey, next month and then the month after that and then the month after that, uh, can you do videos for Craig? So I was like, oh, OK, well, I guess what I was going to release and now I'm now going to shift three months ahead of time, four months ahead of time. Then I'm going to make three new videos to get released before that one. Oh, and then I signed another deal with Craig and they want me to do that again. So now this one video got moved four months and then another four months. Yeah. And like stuff like that. 
Yeah, I hear you. I do actually, ha I have a couple of videos that are like just shot and ready to go, but they're just, I'm like, I don't know if I'll ever actually edit these because I'm, I'm not enthused about them anymore. Like I've kind of moved on. So, mm. yeah. but you put in a lot of work. Yeah, I know. I know. Man, eh, maybe one day I'll get around to it. We'll see. I, th I still have a video where I don't even have the paneling in my garage. Right. That would be a nice <laughs> Which, little continuity thing for people to notice. Do you think I'm anybody sure will notice? people off. Oh yeah. Yeah. I get. I get. I got some comments of, about the, when I did the pricing video. Mm -hmm. People were like, "Did you rip down the paneling?" I was like, no. That pricing video was shot pre-paneling. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And that pricing guide still sells like hotcakes. Really? But the video didn't do super well. It's like thirty or forty thousand views. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, have you referenced it in any other videos? No, but I think there's just a super high click through of people who watch oh. the video that want the plan or want the the pricing guide thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. True. But I don't know. I don't know. Have you have you started uh, coming up with your digital products for your next video? Yeah, so for this one where it's uh, where I'm going to do the custom phone thing, I think I'm going to do a digital product for that, which is, well, one, I'm going to sell these like, I'll see if anybody buys it. I don't think anybody will because it's a really, really niche thing, uh, like the actual sled. I like I'll sell the CNC files, see if anybody cares. I'll probably put them up for like a couple bucks or something like that. Um, but the thing that I was actually interested in doing for this would be a, like a guide on how to get emulation up and running on an android phone oh hell like, yeah yeah you know like, like it'll PDF be like guide or something exactly it'll be a pdf it'll be like all the like here's all the apps you download here's all the websites you go to to get the games here's like you know some of them are a little bit more complicated to get running than other ones here's exactly how you do it and mm, yeah mm, mm. so i like the pdf idea i actually think that this Think of it as like a course, but I wouldn't even necessarily call it a course. I call it a guide. Mm -hmm. And you can use a website like um, we were talking to Cam from Blacktail. He says he uses Podia, P-O-D-I-A. Right. So yeah. what you can basically do is make a series of videos that can be, and they don't have to be edited super hard like a YouTube video. They don't have to be yeah. super quick. Yeah. Um, like a video of you walking through guiding someone how to do it, who do uh, emulator thing on their phone and huh. sell it as like, maybe you sell it as a workshop. Right. Or a video hmm. guide or like a, uh, a, a class or something like that. I, if I were going to do that, Zach, like I'm thinking like I have a phone. I want you to teach me how to do it. Yeah. I would, you would rather, tremendously you would rather, um, more value with the video than the really PDF. okay because my thinking because was you're that the, doing it with me right my thinking was that the written guide would actually be a little bit more would be a little bit better because when i watch these tutorial videos i'm always like especially if it's for like something computer related the person will have a tendency to like fly through things because they know what they're doing and then you had to constantly mm. like stop the video. Okay, what website did he say? T type, 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 type. And then... Right, right, right. So, but I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. So with like the Podia thing, which mm -hmm. was like the course, you could separate it out into chapters. Like uh, you yeah. have one chapter that's like, here is where I find all of my games. And then mm -hmm. while you do that chapter next to it, it has like, you can put links and stuff. Oh, and that's cool. Okay, okay. If that, so like say the, the, the websites that you get the game store are no longer in existence, you can go back and not yeah. only edit those links, but you can actually just upload a new clip in that section uh, of the course. That's cool. And you can amend things to it. Hmm. I'd check it out. Okay, okay. Interesting. That's that sounds like a lot of work, which I'm a little scared of because, uh, you know, I was like, OK, you know, like this guide, I can sit down. I could probably write it over the course of a couple days. But that right. sounds like something that I would have to sit down and, you know, that's probably a, like a week's worth of work, but probably worth it. 
But the PDF guide could always be step one. And then if you get a yes. lot of interest in that, then you can be yeah, like, yeah, I put out this PDF guide sound like hotcakes. So many people were interested in it. And because of that, I, you know, you can do air quotes. I heard all of your feedback and I've decided <laughs> to make a full video course guiding people through how to do it. Yes. Yeah. I do like the idea of video courses. So it's uh, that's right. that would be a relatively easy one to do, too. I right, got my creative juices flowing. 20, 30 bucks or something. If you're like, this is going to be a half hour to 45 minute guide of how to do all this. I'd, yeah. I'd probably buy that if I were interested. Like that seems pretty, doesn't seem super expensive, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it'd be really hard to change our mindset of editing a course versus editing a YouTube video. I would want it to be so snappy. Yeah, yeah. The graphics like, flying on screen and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but... Eh. Yeah. I, I would yeah. probably buy somebody else's. Like, I might buy one of Cam's courses and then just watch it and see. Right. You know, so like, How does he do it? I've paid for other people's courses that are in our space, and I, I'm not going to say any names. I don't think it's mm -hmm. relevant to this discussion. Uh, about seven different people's courses... There are some that I'm like, okay, wow, this is this is impressive. And there are other people where I've gone, they really sell this for this amount of money. And they sell a lot of these. Oh, you're gonna have to so, tell me in the after show. Yeah, it's uh it's a low barrier of entry. I would see my thing is like if I'm gonna charge somebody money for YouTube videos, I'm like a little bit like oh nobody's really paying for it. Like you know if there's like a little error here and there, it's like no big deal. I think if I did a course though, I would want it to be like perfect. Yeah, which is yeah, so. yeah. We, we we can talk about that in the after show. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, should we? I we're what hour and twenty in on the live stream, which means we're probably about an hour into the. Into the hour podcast. ten into the to the podcast. I think this is a good point to kill this thing, put it out of its misery. All right. Well, I'm lagging a little bit, so I'm going to let you do the outro of the uh, of the main show, and then I'm going to reset my router before we go to the after show. Oh man, this is a lot of pressure right now. Well, everybody, thank you for joining us for another beautiful episode of Off the Cut. Send us your questions to offthecutpodcast at gmail.com. Send us some voice notes, for God's sake. It's mm -hmm. right at the bottom of the Spotify thing. I think there's a little... If you're if you're mm -hmm. listening on Spotify, there's a little way to do it right on Spotify. Uh, and, yeah, thank you for listening. Don't be cheap. Check out the after show. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you always say, right? Yeah, I think our, our new thing is going to be... Just remember... When you support us, you're not supporting the Green Sears podcast. And that's the most important thing. Exactly. Every dollar that goes to us does not go to them. Yes. And you can write it off on your taxes. That's right. We're a registered charity. Right. Uh, don't be a freeloader. That's absolutely right. Well, we will see you guys next week. Honestly, uh, seriously, we appreciate you listening. Yes, uh, make sure you, you uh, don't check out Green Suiters. Go check out For the Grand Podcast. It's a great podcast. Mm -hmm. It's available mm -hmm. on Apple and Spotify. Oh, um, and I think, oh man, Mark has a new podcast that he does with um, the Dave Bro and Joey. Laws. The Bro Laws. I can't remember. I, have, I haven't listened to it yet. Uh, spoiler alert. But uh, <laughs> something to do with being a dad. Oh, I was texting Mark today. I should have asked him. Oh, well. Is it we'll, we'll let call you know me next daddy? Show. Mm, that sounds familiar. Yeah, that's that's definitely it. Check out Call Me Daddy. That's Mark's podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with Mark and the Pro Laws. All right, everybody. Peace out. We will see, see you everybody. next week or something. I don't know. <laughs> Perfect outro. <laughs> that was a good outro. People are going to be like, wait, is he going to say something else? <laughs> is um, he going to come back next week or no? I don't know. Uh, uh, da, da, da. The one where, where we crapped on a green suit. That's not too bad. The only <laughs> note that I have is hinges. Uh, uh, Are we talking keep... about the iceberg lettuce? The one where they where they hit yeah. an iceberg. Yeah. That's um... not terrible. Mm. <laughs> Unrecognized word. Ice. Two C's. I didn't recognize that. 
What else did we talk about? We talked about hinges. Uh, talked about odious oil. <laughs> the one where they get odious oil to sponsor the podcast. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. You like, like that? that? Yeah, I do like that. <laughs> okay. Sponsor the podcast. <laughs> Eric shirtless. What's I, I that happened in the, the pre show, I think. Yeah, that's uh, what the title will be on YouTube. But I'm gonna do Odie's oil thing. I'm gonna like put like asterisk, 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 asterisk. So it looks like we're like beeping it out where they get okay. beep oil to sponsor yes. the podcast. Okay. That's good. That's good. Um Okay. Uh, we get, do we have any questions show up in the thing? Uh, sorry, I was just setting up the after show, which is uh, another all... benefit for... Well, I mean, everybody watching the live stream is probably already a patron, so what right. are we saying? All right. Um, I use Final Cut to edit. Any other questions in here? Uh... Dadu really wants me to say his name. I'm not. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I mean, I realized that we, we've allowed Wes to switch his name like three or four times and we always read it, but we told Dadu that he couldn't. So I feel like we're not being very consistent there. Well, we're like the U.S. government. <laughs> and consistency, baby. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's all we got. The one where okay. they where they get beep to oil to sponsor the podcast <laughs> are you worried that if we put Odie's oil that he'll come after us dude I, I don't know what that guy is capable of he is a straight psychopath yeah I know I know he would probably try and watch some sort of legal attack against us I've considered just for shits and giggles to email him and ask him, be like, hey, would you mind sending out a jar of Odizo? I'm doing a stress test against that in Rubio. Like, I'm just trying to find anything that would trigger him that would just send him on a tirade just <laughs> to see what his response is. I think it'd be really funny. You should do that, but you should film it all and make it into a video. <laughs> Put it on just, my second channel. Yeah, just... You trolling the Odie's oil owner. I think it's so funny how no one on YouTube uses Odie's oil anymore. Nobody. Just disappeared. Uh, even on Instagram. Like, the stuff is... It used to be everywhere, Gone. but it's just completely disappeared. <laughs> because the guy's an asshole. Yeah, he really is. He brought it... He did right. it to himself. I wonder if they're... If they still sell well or if, they, like, their sales have plummeted. God, I have no idea. I have no yeah. idea. Well, wrap it up here. Go to the after show. Sounds good to me. I'm going to go get a drink and I'll see you over there. You're going to reset your router, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So give me a, okay. an extra minute. In, okay. in the meantime, cool. ever, anybody else uh, send over questions for the after show? We only got we only got Please. three. <gasps> That's not enough. Uh, it might be a short after show. That's all right. We've been doing yep. long ones lately. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, see you, we're out of here. We'll see you. Boom. Boom. Mm.